Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Terry House here, meeting at EK Utilities with Bath and Gunner. To begin with, we're going to browse out to the Android Tools folder under the SDK. Uh, the location is C colon program files x86, Android, Android SDK for Windows, and Tools. Once you get to that folder, you'll notice that there's many different applications that you can use with uh, the SDK, but some of them you can use for Android as well. Uh, take, for example, the emulator. You can launch that, and that will bring up the SDK emulator, um, the default one. Uh, you can use um, the zipline tool for aligning APK files for when you uh, repack when you um, pack your uh, APKs for the uh, market. And uh, you can also use DDMS.bat. Um, DDMS.bat is a program that will let you view various things on the uh, internal memory of the phone. I will launch that now and give you a preview. The DDMS application stands for Dalbit Debug Monitoring System. Uh, you can use the DDMS program for many different tasks. Uh, looking at the first page, you can see that the log file is open by default. Um, that will give you different um, statuses on the log itself. Another handy feature is if you go to device, you can run the log cat and that produce the current log cat. Uh, it's got a scroll bar where you can scroll up and down through it, search through it. Uh, if you're done with that and you want to uh, check out another feature in the log cat, you can hit done. Uh, do whatever you need to do on your uh, phone and then run log cat again and it'll add whatever you did since last time. So basically you just uh, hit done and then um, run the log cat again to get the current statistics. Um, another handy thing that the DDMS program lets you do is you can click on device and the screen capture and it will fetch the current screen that's displaying on the Android device. And after you fetch it, you can do different things with it. You can rotate it. You can save it. Uh, the default file name is device.png. You can change that if you want. If you want to do a series, you can number them. And, uh, if you want to catch the next screen in your app, you just go to the emulator and or phone, whichever you're running it on. Uh, change whatever you need to change on your phone or emulator, and then just click on refresh here. And now we get the current screen, and then you can save that too. Okay, this last little bonus feature I'm going to show you here is not actually in the uh, tools directory. It's one step up in the Android SDK directory, and it's called the SDK Manager. If you click on the SDK Manager, or double click on the SDK Manager, with the screen that says choose packages to install. Mine is blank because I've already installed everything, but if there's any packages there, you can choose to accept them or accept all and then install them, but simple as none, we're going to go ahead and hit cancel there. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to virtual devices. And this is where you add all your virtual devices. You can see that I have a Galaxy Tab and my HTC Evo and then the stock uh, emulator that comes with it. But if you click over here on new, you come up with a screen where you can configure your ABV however you want it. I'll type a name in here and then I'll drop down and select uh, Google 2. Uh, Android 2.2 API level 8. Um, for the SD card, I'll put 64. Uh, for resolution, 
distribution. I'll go 320 by power 30, which is about the size of my Android uh, Evo after the uh, app inventor gets through rescaling it. And then uh, you can click on new for hardware and have whatever hardware you want. Uh, you just keep repeating the process for uh, each item you want to add. Like, uh, you can add touchscreen support and audio support, and there's a whole list of things that you can add down through here. Um, once you get through adding all the features that you want, you can hit Create AVD, and that'll show you the results page of how you configured the AVD. And you hit OK there. And then the next step, you can click on the ADD that you just created and hit start. Come up with the launch option and you just hit launch. Okay, and after a few minutes, your uh, emulator will come up. Uh, sometimes it takes a few minutes the first time because it's going through and uh, initializing everything, but usually after the first time, they'll pop up a little bit faster. Uh, I would say it shouldn't take more than five minutes to come up the first time. So anyway, there you've got, got it. That's how you uh, create a new emulator in the, uh, the SDK that you use with the Android app. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and uh, 